Hello, good evening. Peace and blessings be upon you this evening. I do thank you for tuning in to Poem Praise 2. And we're about to um, continue right along in the extraordinary African Americans. Right now, we are. I'm going to talk to you about Black Seminoles. And it goes like this. Before Florida became a state, it served as a haven for several hundred runaway slaves. A settlement known as Fort Negro became a symbol of freedom to slaves in Georgia, and many ran away hoping to find safety there. Now, as a result, Fort Negro was destroyed in 1816 by Army troops under the command of General Andrew Jackson. Yeah, the fellow that's on the 20. And who later became the seventh U.S. president. Now, the destruction of Fort Negro marked the beginning of the Seminole Wars. A series of three wars that stretched over 40 years and cost the U.S. government more than $30 million. Now, although the conflict is named for the Seminole people, it was in the worlds of General Thomas Sidney Jessup, a Negro and not an Indian war. The Seminoles had long offered protection to escaped slaves and hundreds of runaway African Americans had settled among them over the years. Often they intermarried and became active in tribal affairs. Now, runaway slaves often banded together with the Native Americans' help will return later to raid Georgia's plantations in an effort to free friends and relatives. Now, to stop the practice, slave owners put pressure on the U.S. government to take control of Florida and recapture the runaway slaves. In 1819, Spain ceded Florida to the United States in exchange for five million worth of claims that American citizens held against Spain. Still resistant among the Seminoles and the African American allies remained strong. Although greatly outnumbered, they continued to engage in hit and run guerrilla warfare, eventually taking the lives of 1,500 U.S. soldiers. In 1823, however, the Seminoles were forced to accept a treaty restricting them to reservation in southern Florida. Now, from the beginning, African American men such as Abraham, John Caesar, and John Horse served as important advisors and negotiators for Seminole chiefs. Abraham an escaped slave advised Seminole chief McConaughey. He accompanied him to Washington, D.C. in 1825 and later helped negotiate the Treaty of Fort Gibson. Now, in 1835, the Second Seminole War broke out when the African American wife of Chief Osceola was kidnapped by a government agent and sold into slavery. African Americans were heavily involved in the conflict. When General Jessup troops overran a Seminole camp in 1837, they captured 55 members of Osceola's personal guard. Of these, 52 were African American. Now, once again, Abraham took a leading role in both military and diplomatic activities. Partly because of his negotiations, the Seminoles agreed to the 1837 Treaty of Fort Dade and left Florida for Native American territory in Oklahoma. Now, John Caesar had lived among the Seminoles most of his life and was an advisor to King Philip, second chief, of the Seminole Nation after McCanopy. 
Caesar took the lead in encouraging resistance among the plantation slaves in the St. John's River area. Because of his influence, the U.S. government agreed to allow African Americans to move west with their Seminole allies. Although this guaranteed the freedom of many runaway slaves, the government cooperated because it lessened the danger of slave uprising on Florida and Georgia plantations. Now John Horse, a Native American, was a singer of the Treaty of Fort Dade. When the United States violated the treaty, he joined Osceola in renewing hostilities. While meeting the U.S. Army officials under a flag of truce, Horse, Osceola, Wildcat, and other Seminole leaders were taken prisoner and jailed. Together with Wildcat, Horse led a daring mass prison escape. Chased by a force of nearly a thousand men, they evaded capture and defeated the American army led by Colonel Zachary Taylor at the Battle of Lake Okeogebe. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. John Horse led a group of black Seminoles into Mexico where they were allowed to settle in return for guarding the border against rustlers and bandits. Ironically, the U.S. Army, which had spent more than 40 years fighting the black Seminoles, hired many of them after the Civil War. Three black Seminoles won the Congressional Medal of Honor, long considered the best hunters, trackers, scouts, and fighters in the business. The Black Seminoles were a major force in bringing law and order to the Texas-Mexico border. Certainly would like to thank you for tuning in uh, regarding the Black Seminoles. Hopefully I read some of those words correctly. Um, but you certainly get the gifs of the black seminars so uh, enjoy your evening next coming up is going to be nat turner we're certainly going to keep this thing rolling and flowing so we can make it through this book you see how much we got left yeah and we're gonna make it through it believe me all right so um i'll be talking with you soon okay so later until the next time again here at poem praise 2 appreciate this certainly uh subscribe all right, talk to you a little later. Okay.